Hello everyone and welcome to Eddie Swords Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to start a new series on pancreatic cystic lesions, pancreatic cystic neoplasms, tumors. You have heard many names of it. We have divided it into some specific parts so as to make it easier to understand and grasp it for life. Today we are going to discuss the anatomical and physiological basis and a classification that is based on this anatomy of pancreas. So in this topic, overall we are going to see the basics which is the origin of cyst, the cell from which it arises in the pancreas and the relevant terminology. We will see the different classifications of pancreatic cystic lesions which are morphological based on cell of origin as well as malignant potential. We will discuss the common uh, cysts that we see in practice and how to manage them. And we will look at the guidelines. Now, there are more than 10 guidelines on this topic. But what we are going to do is simplify it on the basis of practical points that you need to look for based on these guidelines and have your own algorithm of management that helps you in practice. So we all know this anatomy, pancreas basically has two important parts when it comes to functions. The exocrine pancreas which releases the digestive enzymes and the exocrine pancreas is predominantly created by pancreatic acini and ducts and it is these two structures that has the epithelial lining. On the other end there is also known as an endocrine pancreas which releases the hormones and we have given the list of hormones here and the structure of endocrine pancreas relies completely on islet of Langerhans and capillaries. So this is a very important slide because this will form the basis of our entire discussion. Pancreatic acini and ducts, okay, whereas islet of Langerhans and capillary. So this point is important in the sense that the ACNR secretions enter into the pancreatic duct, okay, whereas the hormones are directly released into the capillaries because the islets are surrounded by blood vessels. So, islets are not in contact with the pancreatic duct. This is an important point to understand. So the endocrine pancreas produces hormones. Just to complete the list, alpha cells release glucagon, beta cells release insulin, delta, somatostatin, gamma, pancreatic polypeptide and epsilon cells release ghrelin. So five types of cells in islet of Langerhans and their hormones. Beyond this exocrine and endocrine pancreas is the stroma in which these things rest and this is the area which contains blood, nerves, lymphatics and the stellate cells or the fibroblasts when active. So all these cells can give rise to tumors in the pancreas. Okay. Now going into a bit of detail on the cell of origin that is the epithelium. This is how a pancreatic acina cell looks. Okay. Flash set and the cells unite together to form acini. So this is a group of pancreatic cells which is the pancreatic acini. From the AC9, the secretions are released from the apical side, okay, the narrower side or the apical side and the secretions enter what is known as the intercalated duct, okay. So, this is how the ductal system starts. This part of the duct is lined by centro acinar cell, again a cell of origin of one of the tumors that we will see commonly as multiple choice question. So, Pancreatic acini release the secretions through the apical part of the cells and the part of the duct that is in direct contact with acini is the intra acinar part of intercalated duct. Okay, This is the part where there is simple squamous centro acinar cell. Once this duct starts going extra acinar, it is lined by low cuboidal epithelium. Okay. But both these parts are together known as intercalated duct. So intraacinar, extraacinar. The lining is important because the cystic lesions of pancreas have different linings that you see in cytology, okay, which we will discuss. But the cell of origin is important for you to understand so that you can characterize the pancreatic cystic lesion 
better. From the intercalated duct, it then continues as the intralobular duct. So multiple acini form a lobule of pancreas. An intralobular duct is the single common drainage of that lobule. From there, it goes between the lobules. So that is interlobular duct. Okay, so intercalated duct, which is in the acini and outside acini. Intralobular duct, which is the predominant lobular duct. Then you have interlobular duct. And then you have the main pancreatic duct. So you look at the epithelium, it grows as the duct grows. So from simple squamous centroacinar cells, it grows into low cuboidal, then low columnar, then stratified columnar, and then high columnar and stratified high columnar in the main pancreatic duct. So this is the acinar structure in communication with the duct. Okay, so how the digestive enzymes reach the pancreatic duct, it is through this system. The stellate cells are present outside the AC9, okay. Coming to cell of origin as the islets, we have seen the cells, but we know that the islets secrete from the base, okay. So, we saw in the previous slide that the acinar cells secrete from the apices into the duct. The islets, on the other hand, secrete from the base directly into blood capillaries. So, Islets are not in communication with ducts and what they release is the hormones that we have already seen. So when the cell of origin is the key islet cell, you get neuroendocrine neoplasm, right? So now it is clear that the cell of origin being islet, the neoplasm will be neuroendocrine neoplasm. Insulinoma, beta cells, glucagonoma, alpha cells, somatostatinoma, delta cells, so on and so forth. So, when we talk of pancreatic cystic lesions, you have a classification known as Klopel's classification, which is based on the cell of origin. And this is very important to understand because if you just see this table, you are going to get confused. But if you understand that there are different cells in the pancreas that we have seen, the acinar system and the islet system, there is also something known as the acinar islet communication, but we'll see that in upcoming topics when it is of relevance. However, if you understood the anatomy that we have discussed, then this classification becomes easier. Okay, so cystic lesions of pancreas can have an epithelial origin, and so we are talking of the acinar duct system, epithelial origin. It can also be non-epithelial origin. So then we are talking of either the stromal cells or we are talking of a pseudocyst, right? So non-epithelial, so it is outside the acinar ductal system and the islet system. Epithelial is inside the acinar ductal system or the islet system, but only if there is a morphological cyst present, okay? So Whenever we discuss cystic neoplasms, the serous cystic neoplasm, the mucinous cystic neoplasm, the intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm, and the solid pseudopapillary neoplasm. These four are the common neoplasms that you see in practice. Okay, And if you combine these four, apart from pseudocysts, these four will form the bulk of pancreatic cystic neoplasms okay the other the cystic neuroendocrine tumor okay acinar cell so that is the centro acinar cell acinar cell cystadenoma cystic acinar cell carcinoma then you have hematoma and teratoma which are ectopic epithelial cells okay then you have pancreatoblastoma more common in childhood and then you have metastatic epithelial neoplasm so all these cystic pancreatic neoplasms are epithelial in origin. What that means is that they may or may not be in communication with the pancreatic duct based on the cell of origin. Epithelial non-neoplastic, one rare entity but commonly asked in exam, so we have highlighted, is the periampullary duodenal wall cyst. This is also known as groove pancreatitis or cystic dystrophy of duodenum with heterotopic pancreas or paraduodenal pancreatitis, right? So, this classification looks very bulky, looks very difficult, but if you understand that it is simply based on the cell of origin, 
the four common types of neoplasms, the rarer ones, then the non-epithelial neoplastic and the non-epithelial non-neoplastic. So this is how you can remember this classification. So we saw the basics, we saw the origin of cis histology and the relevant terminology. We have seen the classification based on cell of origin. In the next part, we will look at the morphology of cystic lesions. And based on the morphology, there is a classification. So we will look at the morphological classification as well as the classification based on malignant potential. So the next part will complete the first two sections of this topic. As you all know, this is our website. A lot of our past videos and publications are there. There are books on surgery, books that are recommended by other authors, which are there on the website. So you can have a look there. Thank you.